Hey guys, it's Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA with EA Tax Resolutions. Well, today I'm going over everything tax for an ISO or an incentive stock option. So if you were recently granted one of these or maybe you recently sold or exercised an incentive stock option, be sure to check out this video for everything tax on an ISO. All right, before we get into this video, I want to make sure we're talking apples and apples here. Now there's a lot of different types of stock option plans out there, okay? And again, today we're talking about incentive stock options. We're not talking about an employer stock purchase plan or restricted stock units. Those are different uh, stock options and are taxed differently. So again, make sure to look at your agreement that you signed the contract to, to get these, the, the stocks, and be sure that it does say, you know, incentive stock option on there. All right, second off, Let's make sure we're talking the same language here, okay? Make sure you understand these key terms that we're gonna be going over uh, on this video, all right? The first one is the grant date. That's the date that you were actually given these stock options or the date that you signed that, that agreement to, you know, to get the stock options. Maybe the day you got promoted at work, maybe the day that you got signed on as an employee with your employer. Um, they might've granted you these, these stock options, uh, but you can always refer back to that uh, service agreement or let's see that contract to get that stock option uh, to see that date. That's what the grant date is. Vesting refers to the date that the stock options become exercisable. <laughs> Um, so generally speaking, the employer wants you to stay on board with them for a certain amount of time before they offer you these uh, stock options. That is referred to the vesting period or vesting time. Um, and once you pass that vesting period, then you're able to exercise your options or purchase the stock is really what that is. And that leads into the third one here, exercising a stock option means you're purchasing that stock at the set price that the option uh, was granted at, okay? Regardless of whatever the price was at the time um, that you exercised. So generally speaking, the reason why stock options are awesome because you purchase it for a lot less than what they're actually valued at on market value. So, you know, you're making money on that. So that's uh, what's happening here. That's uh, what exercise means. Sales date's pretty straightforward. I don't know why I have it on here, but it's the day you actually sell your stock. Uh, and the next two here kind of relate to each other. Qualifying, disqualifying disposition. Um, okay, so let's see here. Qualifying disposition um, is, it relates to the one to two year time limits. So what that means is to be a qualifying disposition, you have to sell your stock two years after the grant date and one year after you exercise the stock, so after you purchase the stock. And then we uh, get a qualifying disposition and, and you want generally to have a qualifying disposition because we get uh, preferential capital gains treatments, right? The zero, 15 or 20% tax rates on the gain of this. Um, versus if it's a disqualifying disposition in the second example here, uh, basically disqualifying disposition is anything that doesn't meet this one or two year time limits. Uh, okay. And again, we'll go into this in a, in a minute here, but if it's a disqualifying disposition, then either some or all of the gain on your sale will be at the ordinary income tax rates, which are higher than your long-term capital gains tax rates. Uh, the ordinary are the the ones that you know you normally see uh, the brackets the 10 12 22 24 32 um, etc those ones okay um, so ideally we want to get in that qualifying not disqualifying but nonetheless we'll go over that in a second okay so like i just kind of alluded to the most favorable tax situation to sell your iso is the qualifying disposition that is two years from the date you were granted the ISO and one year from the date that you purchased or exercised the ISO. And if you do this, then the gain on your stock option is taxed at the long-term capital gains rates, either the zero, 15 or 20%. That is the most favorable situation to sell an ISO for tax. Okay, there's other things to consider, but Nonetheless, that's all we're talking about here today, and that would be the most favorable situation for tax. 
All right, so what you came to the video for, how does the tax work on the ISOs, incentive stock options, okay? Well, the tax depends on when you exercise the option to purchase the shares and when you actually sell the shares. So there's five possible scenarios which could create a taxable event with the ISOs here, okay? The first is you exercise your option to purchase the shares and you just hold on to them. Number two is you exercise your option to purchase the sh shares and then you sell them within that same year that you purchased them. Number three is you exercise the option to purchase the shares and then you sell them the next year but within a 12 month period from when you purchase them. Number four is you exercise your options to purchase the shares and then you sell them in another year that is less than, sorry, that is over 12 months after you purchase them, but less than two years from the date you were granted the shares. And then number five is you sell the shares that you have exercised over a year ago and over at least two years from the date that you were granted the options. All right, so we're gonna go through these one by one. Hang in there, okay? All right, here we go. Looking at a visual here, uh, so hopefully you can stick with me here, okay? Um, this is the first option. You exercise the option to purchase the shares and then you hold them. You don't actually end up selling them that same year. So in this example, uh, you were granted them, you know, at the end of, <clears throat> excuse me, 2020, you exercise, so you bought them six months later, right, in June of the next year. That's how much the exercise price was. That was kind of like your discount price, right? But they were actually valued at <clears throat> $45 when you bought them. So you obviously got a, a deal there, right? You have not sold them yet, um, right? 100 of 100 shares is what you bought. So the bargain element is $2,000. What is the bargain element? Here is our fun little calculation on the bargain. Basically, it's the discount you got, right? That's how much, 45 is what they're, they're worth. 25 is what you bought them for. The difference between the two is 20 bucks, right? So that's your bargain element. $20 times the amount that you bought, the 100, right? $2,000, that's what the deal you got from your employer for these shares. So if you were to go to sell them you know, right away, you would have made the 2,000 bucks, which is awesome. So what ends up happening, we just hold, held the shares. So we didn't actually end up selling them. So what happens is, we don't report this as a gain on your tax return, but what we do do is we put, report this as an AMT item here, okay, on the on the uh, form 6251. And you'll, you'll see that, give me a second here. All right, you'll see that, that item 6251 AMT, right? Alternative minimum tax, um, geez, where was that? Right there, right? You're gonna put that amount that $2,000 right there in line two, okay? Um, so that, that's that's really what we do. And it's gonna add to the basis of your AMT basis when you go to sell them later. Um, and we'll go into that in a minute here, but that's, that's really all we need to do in this on this transaction here, okay? Um, you're gonna get this form 3291, which is gonna give us kind of all this info here, whoops. Um, and I'm gonna show you what one of those looks like, like this, right? Exercise for ISO. So once you right, buy those things, you'll get this thing and, and, and it has all like when it was granted, when you exercise, how much you bought it for, what was the value on the day you bought it and how much you got, right? So it's got all that information that we just used right here. So that's option number one. Option number two, you exercise your options to, sh to purchase the shares and then you sell them within the same year. Uh, so kind of the same facts as last time, but then we sold them on the same day that we bought them for, right? That $2,000, oh, this one actually is a little bit different, right? We'll see, this is $20 is our exercise price. I guess we got a little bit more of a deal here. Um, and we sold them for 45 bucks, okay? So what ends up happening is we're gonna calculate the bargain element, right? The difference between the deal that we got, right? We only bought them for $20 when they are actually worth 45. So uh, the difference, right, that $25, that bargain times the amount that we bought, the 100, that's our bargain element. That's how much we, we made off of this transaction, right? Now, since we sold them within the same year, this is a disqualifying uh, disposition that we saw earlier, right? And what ends up happening is we get taxed on this full thing as ordinary income tax, as if these were like, you know, from your job, the wages on the paycheck, right? That's exactly what happens here. So, 
So sometimes what happens is the employer will actually include them on the W-2, um, but we have to check this, okay? Because sometimes they don't. And if they don't, then we would have to put it as other income on your tax return, all right? Um, let's see here, for reporting purposes. Yeah, so so that's what we're gonna do. That whole $2,500 is gonna get put as, as ordinary income on the, the front of the 1040. And that's what this is, right? If it's not included on your W-2, we're gonna report it as other income on your return. Um, and then we do have to report on the Schedule D. Schedule D's for gain or loss of stocks, bonds, things like that. Um, so what we have to do, right, is we, we bought it um, one day, we sold it the same day. Our cost basis is gonna be $4,500. And you would think, no, my cost basis is not $4,500, it's actually 2,000 because I bought them for $2,000, $20 a share times 100, right? That's what that 2,000 is. But since we're paying the bargain element up here as ordinary income, we re we add that to our basis. So then we add the, you know, the 25 plus the two, that gives us the $4,500 as our basis in the shares. And then since we sold it for $4,500, we're really not gonna get any gain, right? You end up reporting no gain on the transaction itself. Um, but you will need to put this on the Schedule D because you will get a 1099 from your broker where these stocks are held, uh, showing that you you purchased them for, or you sorry, you sold them for $4,500. They may or may not have the basis on there. They What they probably have the basis on there is for the 2,000. You would have to add in the $2,500. So you're not paying additional taxes on the same money is really what it is. So, so again, in this scenario, if you, exercise the shares you buy them in the same year that you sell them what you do is you report the bargain element right the discount that you get in the 20 difference between the 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 45 and the 20 dollars that 25 bucks you report that bargain element as ordinary income so you'll pay the ordinary income tax the 10 12 22 24 etc um, tax brackets on that um, and then you also have to report this as on the schedule d capital gain or loss but again there's gonna be no gain or loss. It'll be a net zero. You just have to report it. You don't report it, there's gonna be issues. That's the second scenario there. Scenario number three is we sell the shares in the next calendar year, but less than 12 months after you purchase them. All right, so essentially what's gonna happen is we do AMT one year because we exercised it like the first option, uh, but then the, the, second, the second year, what we'll do is we're gonna report right, bargain element as ordinary income, and then capital gains, um, and then an adjustment to AMT is what we're gonna do. So there's a couple different uh, situations here. So, right, what's gonna happen, like in the first scenario, exercise date's 2020. Since we exercised it, we're gonna get that uh, 3921, right, like we saw earlier, something like this, and we're gonna have to report it on the 6251, again, like we saw earlier, um, where was that online? Right there, 2i. Um, and we'll report the bargain element, A and T adjustment, like we saw earlier, that's in 2020. But then since we sold them the next year, but less than 12 months between the day we buy them and we sell them, right, that's six months later. The compensation, so this would be ordinary income is what's happening here. We're gonna get uh, the gain on the sale so the compensation is calculated as either the bargain element or the actual gain on the sale of the stock, whichever is lower. So as we know, the bargain element's $2,500, right? The difference between how much we bought them for and what they were valued at when we bought them. That should say 2020, there we go. Um, but the thing is, is look at that. The price dropped when we actually sold them six months later. So that can happen, right? Um, and you don't want to pay tax uh, when you're losing money here. So or we actually didn't get that full money out of this. Okay, this is kind of like a hypothetical um, gain here because actually you didn't sell on that date, so you didn't actually make the twenty-five bucks. Um, so anyways, what's going to happen here, right? So we do the compensation, the ordinary income, the way we calculate this, because this is less than 12 months, right? It's a disqualifying disposition. Um, we're going to have the compensation, the ordinary income calculated here is either the bargain element or the actual gain, right? So whichever is lower. Um, and as we know, right, we sold them for less than what they were valued at when we bought them for. So it's actually the, the difference between the $30 and $20, which we bought them for. So that 
times the amount of shares we got, thousand dollars is the, the gain. So that needs to either be reported on your W-2, just like the, the example before, or as other income. Again, just like the example before, that thousand dollars. Um, and then on our Schedule D, it's gonna be the same as before. You're gonna have um, sales price is uh, $3,000, right? The $30 times 100 shares, that's what you sold them for. Um, and then you'll have your cost basis as, right, you bought them for $20, but then since you already paid that $10 up here as compensation, ordinary income, you're gonna add that to your basis. So essentially, your basis is the same as your sales price, resulting in a net gain of zero. Um, so again, we'll have ordinary income up top, the difference or the, the lower of the bargain element or the actual gain. And then we'll also have the schedule D in this scenario, but then you're also going to have this one additional step where you're going to need to make an adjustment to AMT. Uh, so because the bargain element is $25, um, which equals 2,500 bucks in the year of the sale, adjustment needs to be added to the st stock's cost basis. So for AMT purposes, which could potentially trigger AMT tax, but at least you're gonna get um, a bigger basis here. So you also need to do this. Again, there's there's gonna be like four steps here, right? 2020 reported on the uh, 6251 AMT as income there, uh, only for AMT purposes only. 2021, the next year, you're gonna have compensation, right? That $1,000, you have Schedule D, just report this as a zero, um, well, 3,000 uh, sales price, 3,000 cost basis, net zero, and then you have another AMT adjustment for 2021, okay? That's, again, you sell the shares in the next calendar year, but less than 12 months after you purchase them. All right, so example number four here, you sell the shares at least one year and a day after you purchase, but less than two years after the grant date. So take a look at some of the facts here. Let's see, what are some of the differences here than previous examples? Sales price went up big time, that's for sure. Commissions paid, we'll take that into consideration uh, in terms of cost basis. Um, bargain elements, the same as previous, but then we get a big gain because of this, right? Okay, deal. Um, you'll see, right, we sold it after almost over a year, a couple months after we bought them, but less than two years from the grant date, right? just under the two year mark here. Okay, what exactly is happening? Okay, so the bargain element needs to be included in box one of your W-2 in 2021. And if it's not, you must add it there or put it as other income just as previously. And as we've previously discussed, the bargain element, right, is $2,500. It's the difference between the amount you bought it for, the $20, um, and I should say exercise, grant price, exercise price, exercise price. Okay, there we go. $20 is the exercise price and the value on the day we bought it, right? So there's the $25, like that's your discount that you got on it. So that's our bargain element that we reported in 2020. Um, if you saw an example one on our 6251 for AMT purposes, okay? But then we sell it right in 2021. So what needs to happen is, is that uh, that bargain element now needs to get reported as on your W-2. And if it's not on your W-2 box one, then you're gonna have to put it as other income, okay? Uh, but then we also need to report the, the gain or loss on the Schedule D. And now since we sold this a year after you exercised it, then you get the the, basically the rest of it, the, the, the gain on the sale of the stock as long-term capital gain treatment. And the way we're gonna calculate this here, okay, right, we acquired it February of 20, sold it June of 2021. 20, you sold it for 84.90, right? That's 8,500 uh, times the 100. Um, minus the 10 bucks. That's what that is, okay. Yep, that's exactly what that says. This amount should be reported as a gross amount on the form 1099B that you'll get from your broker. Okay, so you'll see that on your 1099. We'll put this as the sales price on the Schedule D here, okay. Uh, but then we get the cost basis. Our cost basis is the price you paid per share, right, the $20 times the 100, so the 2,000, plus the bargain element, right? 
Yeah, so we already, we're getting taxed on the 2,500 up here, right? The bargain element is what we're getting taxed here as ordinary income. So our cost basis is 4,500. So now the difference between our sales price and the cost basis is our long-term capital gain that we get uh, taxed on here on the Schedule D. Okay, and then just like in the previous example, you have to make the AMT adjustment because we bought this in, or sorry, we yes, we bought this in 2020. We did the AMT adjustment, added it to 6251 in 2020. So we'll have to take it out in 2021. Sorry, forgot the dates here. <laughs> Um, so that's essentially what we're doing here, okay? And that's exactly what this is explaining. So you make sure you do this. So, so again, in this example, you sell the shares at least one year, one day after you purchase, but less than two years from the grant date. So it's gonna be kind of a hybrid example here. Some of this is ordinary income, that would be your bargain element. And then another part of this is long-term capital gains because you sold it over a year. So the bargain element is, again, ordinary income, and then the gain, the net gain that you get right, which includes this bargain element in your cost basis is long-term capital gains. So essentially that total of these two together is actually what you make, um, but the way it's taxed is kind of a hybrid system here. On to our last example here. Number five, uh, this is a, the only other way that this can, uh, event this, these ISOs can be taxed as. Uh, so you sell the shares at least one year, one day after you purchase and two years after the grant date. Okay, so this is the qualifying disposition. This is like the, the most favorable way to sell the ISOs for tax purposes. Obviously, there could be a non-favorable way for financial purposes because maybe stock goes down, but again, this is just for tax, okay? So just take a look at the dates here, right? Two years, this is two years from the grant date, but at least one year from right the exercise date. Uh, everything else kind of looks the same as a previous example. Okay, stock did go up, that's a good thing. So again, this is a qualifying sale. So what ends up happening, since this is a qualifying sale, none of this gets taxed as ordinary income. The whole thing goes long-term capital gains. So nothing's gonna end up on your W-2. You wouldn't have to put anything as other income and everything is gonna go on the Schedule D as long-term uh, long sale. So what ends up happening, just like the previous example, they get the 84.90. What we do is the sales price, we sold it for $85 times 100 shares. It's 8,500 minus the 10 bucks. That's the 84.90. And then we bought them for $20 a share times 100 shares, right? So that's 2,000 bucks. So essentially we made almost $6,500. 64.90 is what we made off this. This will all grow long-term uh, sale. But then, so, Pretty easy there. And then um, we'll have to make that adjustment because when we exercise them in 19, we did that AMT adjustment to the 6251 for the bargain element, the 2,500 bucks, right? So we'll have to take um, that into consideration on the sale for 2021 and add that into your cost basis for AMT purposes, okay? And that's essentially what's going on here. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Um, again, going over these ISOs, these things are complicated. Almost every time I have to kind of go back and double check kind of exactly how they work when clients come to me with these things, uh, just to make sure they're getting done right. I know they can be complicated. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, if it was, please like, share, subscribe. I'll get some more content out there. Um, thank you so much.